Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. Just a couple more to go for 2022. And as usual, I've got some stuff to show to you. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, um, first things first, I got a uh, little care package in the mail, which included this hat. This is a uh, period correct Hot Wheels hat. This um, came with the uh, period correct RS200, as it says right there. I'm going to wear the hat. I don't have the car. Uh, <laughs> my buddy D's Customs sent this to me, along with a couple of other items that we're going to look at. He sent me this uh, Hot Wheels lanyard uh, thing. That's pretty cool. I actually already have one of these on my keys, but it's getting a little ratty. So I might have to refresh it with this guy, but we'll we'll set that aside and I may put that on my keys. Not that you guys really care, but whatever. So I got that. And then uh, he sent me a really cool little custom. This is, uh, uh, what, it's the Rocket Oil um, casting. And we'll look at this close up in the next uh, segment. So he, of course, D's Customs. He makes customs. Um, he's a good guy. And uh, his, his Instagram is, is pretty entertaining. So you should definitely uh, check him out on IG. Uh, I will show this custom. And then he sent me a Zamac Bone Shaker. Pretty cool. I haven't found a Zamac in the stores in at least a year, I would say. Probably longer. Um, but yeah, it's been a while. And then this is the thing that he really wanted to send me, which is this. This is the uh, Car Culture uh, Liberty Walk uh, super silhouette Nissan Skyline Motul, um, uh, from the latest, I think it's the latest team transport set. So I guess all I really need now is that shell one, and I can easily grab it because there's like 15 of them hanging at target right now. So, uh, but this one, I just, I figured I'm never going to see this. This shell one is such a peg warmer that it just, I don't think they're going to reorder for a while because they have so many still sitting there and they're all that, that shell Porsche 962. Uh, but so I got this one. That's pretty awesome. Cause I pretty much was sure I was never going to find this on the pegs. So I'm, ex I'm excited about that. So thank you again, uh, buddy. I really do appreciate it. We will uh, take a look at that stuff. Of course, in the next segment, I did find some stuff at Walmart. Well, I found a uh, green light at Walmart. I actually picked up green light off of the pegs. I haven't done that in a long time. And uh, mostly I've seen some cars that I've liked. And then I haven't picked them up because the quality control was terrible. You guys know I bark about that, about green light quality control a lot on this channel, um, especially when I'm doing the green light unboxing episodes. By the way, if you don't watch those, you should check out the playlist. It's entertaining at the very least because we might pull out a green machine, which is always fun. They're not my cars. They're not cars I keep. You guys probably know the story or whatever. But uh, the other fun thing is kind of ripping on Greenlight a little bit about their quality control. Like, I love Greenlight. I really do. They do some really cool casting, some really cool stuff. It's just I get pretty unlucky with finding. Either I get really unlucky or it's just a really bad common issue um, is that they have some quality issues. But these three looked pretty good. These are from the latest Hollywood series. It is Hollywood Series 37. I picked up the Bubic Roadmaster Convertible. History Channel, American Pickers. I picked this up. This is a brand new casting from Greenlight. This is the first year that this has been uh, released. So I had to snag one of these and check it out. And from uh, what I could inspect, well, it's in the package. It looks pretty good. And then I picked up the Charlie's Angels 1974 Ford Torino Brougham. 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 I'm always confused how to pronounce that. I've known the correct way and forgotten it and then relearned it and then forgot it again. Uh, but it's a nice looking brown car. It seems like Broms are always brown. I like a brown car. Very uh, era, era period, period, period correct. All right, and then uh, 1974 Volkswagen Type 181. The Thing. This is also a new casting from Greenlight. So that's cool. A couple of new toolings from uh, Greenlight coming later in the year. Um, speaking of new toolings and stuff like that, I, I'm kind of like racking my brain as to what to include. We do that Lamley uh, thing on Instagram, the 64 car tournament. So uh, we all of us contributors, you guys may already know this, whatever, but we all contribute photographs 
we all have to take a picture a certain way. It's outside, the car's got to be facing left, whatever. It's just a basic picture to try to keep them kind of even. And then we do that 64 car tournament on Lamley's Instagram, um, which is great. It's fun. It's a, it's a real fun time to kind of include some other brands other than Hot Wheels in there. And last year, Par 64, or Par 64, however you pronounce it, won with the Roof CTR, uh, which is really cool. So... I'm wondering what's going to win this year, and now that these late arrivals come, I wonder if I should submit pictures of these two cars, uh, just because they're brand new castings from Greenlight. Maybe they should be included. There's a couple of Greenlight castings that I did try to include. Uh, we'll see what happens. One was a Cadillac, one was a tank. I mean, we got to narrow it down, because right now we got like 96 or so cars that people have submitted, and there's got to be a lot of Hot Wheels kind of peppered in there. It's just the way it goes. And it'll be interesting to see what happens, but uh, I might have to photograph those two and see about possibly including them. Anyway, there's that story. I know this one's probably going to be included. This is a Para 64. This thing's a, just a wild car. The uh, Suzetta V16T. This one's in pearlescent white. Um, I did not submit this one, but Brian uh, Bearded Mug Media on uh, Instagram He's the one that photographed uh, the blue version of this and submitted it. His photographs look amazing. So uh, hopefully that one makes it in because it's a very interesting car, a very interesting choice of a casting to do. All right. And then uh, the other things I have to show you yet this week is uh, uh, Shuko slash Tarmac Works, another Porsche, and uh, another one of these 911 RSRs. I think they're all basically the same. There might be some slight variations in them, in these Collab 64 models. So it's a Shuko casting, I believe, and then... I don't know how these collabs work, but whatever. We're going to take a look at this outside of the package. The last time I got one of these, I could not get it off of the base because the screw was, like, torqued uh, in there. Could not get it out. And you know what? I never got it out. It's still in the package. I've never taken it out of the package because I could not remove that screw and I was afraid it was going to strip and actually honestly I just never revisited it to try to get the screw back out. So whatever. Let's hope we get better luck with this one that it's not cranked down. All right. And then lastly, we got Mini GT. And then speaking of Lamley again, if you're watching this video in time, which it will be Saturday for you guys, Saturday evening, Sunday afternoon, Lamley is doing a giveaway on whatnot with all 16 of the Mini GT models that we chose to be in the 16 car Instagram voting tournament thing on Lamley's Instagram. So he's giving all of those cars away. It's, a, it's sponsored by Whatnot. They are, I believe, providing the cars. Lamley's giving them away, though, live on Whatnot. So again, if you're not on Whatnot, it's a pretty interesting app. Uh, I suggest you do check it out. Um, it's kind of a fun thing. It's all live auction sales. Cool format. If you want to sell on whatnot, I would definitely maybe recommend it. I think I'm going to eventually in the future. We'll see here. I've got to get my act together with that. Um, but anyway, I will drop my invite link again down in the comments of this video. If you do click on that invite link, uh, I believe the promo is still going on where you will get $15 towards your first purchase. And I will get a little kickback as well if you actually do follow the link, sign up, and purchase something. So it's a way to support my channel. It's also a way to grow Whatnot's audience, which I think that that thing's got a lot of potential for being pretty cool. All right. Anyway, Mini GT. So I have some Mini GT to show. Uh, one is this Bentley Mulliner Mil Milliner Balakar. And I already opened this up because I took pictures of it. And I submitted this to that 64 car Royal Rumble. And this is also included in, I believe this is this is one of the models that is included in the 16 car tournament for Instagram. So this is one of the models that you could possibly win tomorrow, Sunday, uh, December, what is it, 11th, 10th, something like that? 11th, 11th tomorrow. So check that out. Uh, then the rest of these, I don't, well, actually one other one, this one's submitted, I think, uh, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 plus, I think this one is in, 
A lot of Bugatti. Mini GT was Bugatti heavy this year because that licensing just popped and then they got they made a bunch of different models right away. We got a third Bugatti actually. Bugatti Chiron Pur Sport in yellow. I think the blue one might be in the tournament. A blue version of this, which I showed probably a few weeks back, but we got the yellow one here. And then uh, the other two, I don't think these are in, but uh, Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster in like a charcoal gray. And then we've got the uh, Liberty Walk or LB Works Lamborghini Huracan GT in digital camouflage. This one that kind of looks awesome. All right, so we're going to check out all of this. I'm going to flip the camera around. Again, check out whatnot. Check out the uh, comments. I'll pin a comment to this video with a link. I've been trying to do that right as the video pops. So hopefully as you're watching this, it will be there. If it's not, uh, check again tomorrow uh, before you sign up for whatnot, just so you can get that credit. And again, I do get a kickback from it as well. So I would appreciate it. And as always, you know, subscribe to the, this channel. If you're new here, that would be that would be fantastic. My subscriber number just slowly kind of crawls up. Um, but yeah, I do appreciate it. And uh, let's go ahead and flip the camera around. We're going to open up all of this and, you know, look at it in uh, detail. Yeah. All right. That'd be cool. All right. Let's do it. All right, guys. So let's uh, just right away, let's check out this uh, sweet little custom from uh, my buddy D's Customs at D's Customs on Instagram. Um, he's a very nice guy and, uh, I actually got to meet him very briefly at the only Hot Wheels convention that I ever went to and may ever go to. I don't know. Uh, there is this one coming up in Columbus, Ohio. I'm thinking about just going to do, do some shopping, go room to room. I know it seems odd to go to a convention just to do that, but, uh, I actually have family in uh, the Columbus area. And it could be a nice little dual purpose trip. So we'll see. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, maybe. But this is the Rocket Oil Special. I have no idea what the thing originally was colored. I have no idea at all because uh, I don't really collect this casting. But dang, this thing does look really cool. So it's got like 76 livery on it. It's painted uh, kind of a spectra flamish blue and uh, like how he colored the exhaust and stuff too. Heat treated. It looks really neat. <clears throat> so I'm digging it. Real Riders, of course. Just a nice little clean uh, little custom. I, I think it's pretty awesome. So really cool job there. All right. Uh, then we got the Bone Shaker. Zamac. I don't really have many bone shakers in the collection. In fact, I just went through, I went through some of my uh, mainline cars that I had, and I actually ditched a lot of them. I kept, I think I have one premium example of a bone shaker and maybe one other basic example, and I think this one will stay and maybe it will replace my other basic example. We'll see. I got to see if it's a closed roof or an open roof. But whatever. So this is pretty neat too. I again, bone shaker is not really my thing. I know a lot of people do collect this casting. It's just not something that I typically go after. But it's cool to get a Zamac nonetheless because, I, like I said, I don't find Zamacs in the store ever, ever. All right. But here is the main event from the box. I mean, aside from the hat, the hat is sweet. I really like getting another hat. You know, I'm a bald guy, so. Any uh, dome coverage is uh, always welcome. This thing is sick. I just really like this cat. I do like this casting. It's really, really cool. You guys know I'm not like a super big time JDM fanboy guy, but I mean, I am and I am, I am and I'm not, but this is like undeniably, this casting is undeniably cool looking and to pair it up with this truck, it actually is a pretty solid team's tr Team Transport set. And I've kind of complained about Team Transport a little bit because, frankly, I don't have anywhere to store these things or display these things. So I have to kind of keep them out of the pack, like out of protection, really. They're just kind of sitting out car and truck together. But they take up a lot of space on the, shelv the shelving that I put in here in this room. So, but this car is fantastic. 
This casting is just badass. I mean, there's no other way to say it. It just looks really good. So I really, really like that. I am digging that. I am digging, of course, the truck looks pretty decent. You know, I don't, like I said, I complain about the trucks a little bit. I'd rather just have the car, but uh, this is a set I don't mind because it's open. I just don't, I really don't like when they put the box. So that's why that shell one is just hanging. And like, I haven't even wanted to spend the money to pick it up. Even though I like, I love Porsche, I like Porsche Hot Wheels, and I basically collect Porsche Hot Wheels, like any Porsche that comes out, I try to get it, and I haven't picked up this one, and it's because for the price, I mean, I really just want this car, I don't care for this truck, and I hate the box truck ones, because there's no way, I mean, you can display the car in front of the truck or whatever, I like the open, you know, this makes more sense to me for team transport actually be able to see the car on the truck you know that's just my gripe whatever take it for what you will but this does look pretty cool this is a nice looking pair so i'm digging that indeed very very cool all right moving on from that that's our that's our hot wheels for this evening so for you guys that just like hot wheels i apologize that's all we got Wife is vacuuming now upstairs. Don't know if you guys are picking that up on the, on the mic or not, but I am. All right, uh, let's get into some green light real quick, and then, then we'll get into uh, Mini GT and that Shuko and stuff, some more premium stuff. So, like I said, I, I wouldn't have grabbed these, but I'm like, well, you know, what are the chances? All three of these look pretty good. They don't look like they have any issues, and, uh, and like I said, I've had some pretty bad luck. I found some cars that I wanted to pick up at Walmart and then didn't, simply because they were in rough shape or there was something major wrong with them. So the thing, this VW has kind of, I have to imagine this has been a car they were planning on doing for quite a long time. And the reason why I say that is because the original Club V-Dub series, this car, I knew something sounded weird. I had my microphone on or uh, omnidirectional setting, which is completely wrong. And I just uh, corrected that. So the audio just changed suddenly and hopefully for the better. I do apologize. All right. This thing, I, like I said, the original Club V-Dub series, this was uh, in like the back of the packaging showed pictures of Volkswagens, like silhouettes of them or whatever. And this was definitely in there. And I'm like, well, they're definitely going to do this car. Well, it took many, many years for them to finally come out with it. It does have an opening part where you can see the engine in the back. That is pretty nifty. This little engine hatch is metal. Oh, please don't break it. Okay. Uh, this is plastic up here and is obviously very fragile. Sometimes Greenlight just does a really good job. It's strange. They're, the way that they design their casting, some are designed with completely, it seems like completely different principles than others. We do have a little chip here on the paint. I did not do that. So that came out of the package like that. You can see it right there. And of course, it's on the side that was not visible from inside the package. Classic. So, dang it. All right, well, that's all right. But uh, all in all, this is a cool little casting. So I'm digging it. I don't think we ever got, I don't think we've ever had a actual 164 scale version of this car or truck or the thing, this thing. I don't think we ever have. I, th I think I know that uh, I think Matchbox has done it. Uh, Hot Wheels may have done it. I'm trying to think. But I don't recall anything that's ever been like close to real 164 scale. So this is a welcome collection, I'm sure, for, or welcome to anybody's VW collection, I'm sure. And a welcome edition. So very, very, very cool. Definitely neat. All right. So. And it rolls good too. 
for those of you that care. Pretty cool. All right, another brand new casting. We got this 1949 Buick Roadmaster convertible. Oh, of course, we're gonna have audio issues. What's a what's a video for me without some sort of technical problem? <clears throat> 1949 Buick Roadmaster convertible in like a seafoam green. Very cool. Good choice in casting, I think, for green light to do. And again, I found this at Walmart. Yep, tops plastic, so they're definitely going to be doing convertible version. Actually, they might have already. I think this came out in the is it in another? Oh, come on, dude! Well, as usual, this is the this would be a reason why I wouldn't pick it up. It reminds me of those Steve Buscemi memes. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It looks all right to me. What? Well, um, if I want to take a picture of it, at least if I was going to submit it to the uh, Lamley 64 car thing, I can just take a picture of this side. I guess even if it was this side, I could just do it and then mirror it, but whatever. That is... Okay, so this side looks good. The casting in general is pretty solid. I mean, it's solid metal. This thing is heavy duty, except for the, of course, the top, because the top, we have a top up and a top down version, of course, that we're gonna see. But these freaking white walls, man. Never can they get these, all four tires right, ever. I swear, like almost never are these okay. I mean, the only option I would have basically now would be to try to rip the tire off the back, which is going to be tough because half, like the majority of it's covered. And then flip the tire around and have all black tires, and that wouldn't look too bad. But what the hell, dude? Like, why does this, why is this so difficult to produce these with the, like, even to this quality on, on all four tires? Like, how does this pass the test? And this is a common problem, by the way, really with any die cast manufacturer that sells domestically here in the United States. It's always the white wall stuff that they struggle with. So it must be a difficult thing to do. But green light seems to be the, the worst. Well, that is. That's disappointing. I mean, I can't even, like, I couldn't even, like, paint that or something to correct it. So. All right, well, whatever. I was going to, like, praise that and say that that was a really good car and that's uh, really cool and blah, blah, blah. But do I sound pretentious getting mad about a tire not having a white wall? Well, if I do, I apologize, but really... Think about it. I, and I think about this all the time. Like I, okay, so you buy any other toy or something like that, especially if you have kids, you're very familiar, right? You can get like whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm trying to think of something as an example. Um, let's just use My Little Pony for as an example, right? My daughter kind of like, like was into those for a little while and, and you pay money and you get these little figures. Well, these little ponies and stuff like never have quality issues they always look like good i guess whatever for what they are and uh the price point somewhere around the cars and i get it they have to pay for licensing and stuff like that so it does increase costs and whatever but it just seems like quality control why and maybe it's because i look at these a lot harder than i look at any other like toy or any other thing or collectible um at a store but it just seems like diecast for some reason, like the quality control is just lacking. This one looks 
fine. Um, I mean, that's not too bad, I guess. It's like seriously, I was like, oh, you got well, seventy-five percent out of the out of the tires or wheels, I should say. Look really good. It's only gonna be one, though, all right. This one's also got some paint bubbling in the back as well. That's a little concerning. So I don't know what's up with that, and like, it's not like it's because oh, these are made in China, and you know, blah 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 blah. Well, you know, there's a lot of things made in China. Um, you know, a lot of toys, a lot of goods are made in China and it just seems like the percentage of stuff with issues is high when it comes to die cast in one sixty four scale in particular. I don't collect any other scales, so I can't really speak for anything else, but it sucks, man, because uh, these look good. I mean, this looked perfect on the other side, like just facing this way. I'm like, yeah, that looks really good. Looks, and it still looks good. Okay, it's not bad. This one's just got that little small issue there. I, you know, never would try to like paint silver over it because it would, I'd never get the color right or it would never match. It'd still look really weird. It's something I could take pictures out and easily Photoshop out. So that's not an issue. This, I could Photoshop as well. Because my skills are getting pretty decent at that. But uh, it just would take a little bit of work. And that's a bit irritating to do. And this just ain't worth it. So that sucks. But whatever. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's let this go. Um, I'm still kind of happy with my three-car purchase there. This thing is really cool. But every single one of these at least had one little minor issue. Okay, so take note of that. We got this little paint chipping right here. That was straight out of the package. We got this white wall issue and this right here. So when I'm saying frequency of issues, that's literally 100% of the green line cars that I bought that I inspected in the package had an issue on the opposing side that you couldn't see because of in the package because it was in the package. So, like, say what you want to say, but what are the chances of that, okay? And I get it. They're not that expensive, right? They're six, seven bucks. I mean, but it's still six or seven dollars. I mean, I, in the and I know the castings are more complicated than a Hot Wheels Basic. I get that. But Hot Wheels Basics are mass produced, and uh, they look pretty good. Their quality is pretty decent. Just saying. So let's start looking at some stuff that's more expensive and hopefully that we get better luck. Now this is the uh, Zeta V16T. This is just a crazy car. It is a crazy idea to decide to cast this car. But big up to uh, Para64 for choosing to do this one. It's just one that you don't think I would have seen from any other die cast manufacturer. That they would just choose to like pull this one off. And I'm glad they did because this thing is like the weird, like, child of a Ferrari Testarossa and a Lamborghini Diablo, is what I would say. It, like, has design cues from each. It's literally like, that's what I would call it. It's like a mix between a Diablo and a Testarossa. Very unique car, the quad flip-up headlights. Strange looking car. Uh, interesting looking car. Quality seems to be pretty decent on this, so that's good. This is in a Marauder. 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 I don't know how many of these were produced. It's a rare vehicle, though. I know that. It's cool, though. It's cool. It's definitely neat. I love, like, the concept style cars from this era, from this in, like, the 70s. Um, they're just some of the coolest designs for automobiles. And this screams concept car, even though I don't think it was a concept. It was actually made in 1991, actually. So all the way from 70s through uh, early 90s, I'm going to say concept cars and cars that looked like concept cars, which I would just consider this, it looks like a concept car, are pretty neat. 
and uh this one just it's cool it it fits in i think it's neat the the weird like the fender well in the back looks really goofy but that's how the car actually looks so it's this weird like curved and then jagged thing and then you got a perfectly round one in the front but it just you know you can tell it's like very much diablo-esque but let me know what you guys think about this it's a it's an interesting car for sure if you're unfamiliar with it just google it uh i don't know enough history about it to really educate you i looked it up of course read it and then forgot it <clears throat> that's the way it goes all right Shuko Porsche collab 64. We're going to hopefully get the screw out of the bottom of this one. I like this packaging, by the way. I'm a big fan of boxes. I like box packaging. And if you can't do the acrylic thing, which I do like the acrylic thing, it's fantastic. The reason why I've grown to really love acrylic packaging and car screwed down is because when you run out of display case room, you can display them in their package, and yet you can still take them out, unscrew them, take pictures of them, put them back, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's a little bit of effort, but the nice thing is, is you don't need to buy a bunch of display cases, right, for them because you can literally just stack them on top of each other. Now, I can stack a bunch of Shuko on top of each other. That works because they have this open window right here, and uh, it just it's a good way to package the car. So my preferred best ideal way to package cars would be somewhat like this or like the par that we just looked at and i don't know what it is with these man but uh, it's gonna happen again it's not coming out that screw is not coming out and that's a flathead that i'm doing and i've talked about this prior to this video where i take a flathead and use it on a phillips screw because it actually bites harder on if you get it that fits the slot perfectly, it's much easier usually to actually turn the screw. Here's a Phillips. Dude, it's not happening. It's why did they do that? So this one is not coming out either. We're gonna leave it just like this. I do have the option. I could just rip this thing right out of the pat, right out of the cardboard, and I could take a vice grip, grab the head of that screw, and get that sucker out. But we're not gonna do that because I'd like to keep the packaging, like I said. So I guess we look at it like this. So I think this is the last one of these that I'm going to, to buy. I've got three of them. And I would say it'd be fair to just say this is going to be the last one. It's not just because of the screw. It's just because I have enough of the casting. Although the screw thing is irritating. I don't want to have to try to drill that out either. And like literally, I'm not lying, folks. Like this is, oh, I think I might have just got it. There we go. I did get it. Okay. Got her. So there you go. Fat Turbo. Fat Turbo. Fat Turbo. Fat Turbo Express. These roll a little bit. Not great. Not expected to be great, so that's fine. But yeah, I like the uh, Tarmac Works collab stuff. I've, I've showing a Tarmac Works a little more love than usual this year. Um, I generally in the past haven't been like a very big fan of their stuff. I mean, I think their stuff is hit or miss. I, I do like the fact that Tarmac has kind of a wide variety of things as far as like quality and stuff like that. They have the Hobby 64, the Hobby 64 Plus now, the Road 64, the uh, Global 64, which are the castings I generally like the most just because they're, they roll, they, um, they just seem to be, I don't know, somewhat better. And then the collab stuff, the collab stuff is really neat as well. So this is a, this is pretty cool. You guys have to let me know if it's worth the money that you got to pay for one. Um, but they're pretty decent. All right. We have mini GT to go and that's it. We don't need screwdrivers anymore. That's nice. That is a nice factor, even though I just told you I really like packaging screwdriver screws in it. Um, of course, now we're backpedaling. So let's uh, 
take a look. We'll take a look at the one I already got open. Uh, the Bentley M M M M M M Liner Balakar in yellow flame. Cool color. Popper open. So, before Mini GT, the really only way to get a really good detailed Bentley was, I believe, to go with, with Kyosho. So, obviously, none of the modern stuff they didn't really have. This car's pretty wild. It's kind of either you love it or hate it. I think it's kind of neat. I uh, kind of like the design of it. I like the wheels. And I do like the color as well. Very detailed interior. As you can see there, get it to focus there. A uh, very cool little piece. You guys will have to let me know what you think. And of course, it's Mini GT, so it rolls really well. The quality control is excellent, and it's got these rubber mirrors, so you don't have to be as scared. It's got they're fragile, but you don't have to be as scared of breaking them off and uh, ruining your model. That is nice because I, I I try to be careful with these things, but it's just not always not always possible. Um, did I call, dude? I'm starting to have a weird feeling that I called that a Bugatti in the first half of the video. Did I? Did I screw that up? It starts with a B because I was talking about Bugattis, and yeah, you know I might have. Well, if I did that, you guys can delete your comment now because I caught it. If you're still watching. All right. And then uh, Bugatti Sheeran Super Sport 300 plus world record 304.773 miles per hour. That's fast. That's quite fast. And impressive. Uh, Bugatti. And of course, it's a TSM model. So everything is like legit licensed. You got like these holographic stickers, all that stuff. Um, I have a version of this casting already. This is the uh, this is the Bugatti with a long rear end. The one I have is all black, like a matte black, and now this is the one with orange stripes. And I definitely prefer, I think, this one over the other one. This one you can carbon fiber weave all over. Because I'm sure the body is made of all carbon fiber. The rear tail lights look awesome on this thing. It is like a translucent red, and then they painted the red over the top, and it just looks really good. Mini GT just has a way of doing just a ex extremely fantastic job with their little tiny details and making them look really good, and then keeping these cars at a relatively low price for the quality or for the detail. And this one, you can even see, like, they put the outline of the wing that would pop up, even though, uh, you know, it's, the wing obviously isn't there, but they put that detail there, and that's uh, kind of a really neat touch as well. So very cool Bugatti, definitely digging that, and pretty much for 164 scale detailed Bugattis, as far as if you want them licensed, legitly. Uh, Mini GT is your brand for that, for sure. Uh, now we got to get through some plastic here. So this next one is the Bugatti Chiron Per Per Sport in the just a basic old yellow. We've seen it in blue. Now in yellow. Pull her out and take a peek. I think I prefer it in blue, looking at this. But it does look pretty good at the same time, so not much to complain about. But again, the detail, and again, this has like the same sort of uh, rear light setup, very similar. This one's got the big wing, the 16 up in the front, same sort of headlight style. It's essentially... It's sort of the same car. It's a Chiron. Uh, it doesn't have the long rear end that this one has. 
The wheels are pretty interesting. Kind of spider webbish. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. So pretty decent. Not much to talk about. I have shown this casting in the past, again, in blue. And I kind of like, even now I got this out, I do prefer it, I think, in blue. It does look decent in yellow. But then, uh, lastly, we got the Lambos. And uh, so let's start with the Adventador SVJ Roadster. In uh, Grigio Telesto which is, uh, I guess, a fancy way of saying uh, dark gray, charcoal gray, we'll call it, based on the packaging. Let's see what it looks like in person. Can you get your holographic stickers and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, it's a gray. I do love mini GT packaging as well. The only downside to it is you can't display the car in the package. But for storage purposes, these things are great. And the fact that you don't have to take out a screw is also a plus as well. There's always trade-offs. All right, so the SVJ Roadster, it looks pretty cool. This is the second version of this casting that I have. I think the first one that I got was in white. And now we have this one in uh, this gray color. And as far as 164 scale Lamborghinis go, I'm gonna say that Mini GT is tops for that as well, especially for the modern Lamborghinis. So check it out, check out the detail. Quite nice, it's a darker color. It'd be harder to photograph, I think, and to look really good, but it's a solid little model. And again, of course, it rolls and all that stuff. Very, very cool. All right, and then lastly, digital camo. Liberty Walk, Lamborghini Huracan GT, and Digital Camouflage. I love this casting from uh, Mini GT. Um, the body kit, this the Liberty Walk body kit or whatever for these uh, Huracans just looks really, really cool. I've got several versions of this casting. And what's, what's adding another one in Digital Camo? Cannot go wrong. That's awesome. Okay, so that's basically going to be it for this video, guys. I know we just looked at this for two seconds, but it's a sick casting. I have, again, I have a bunch of different versions of it, so I'm not going to really go in detail about the casting, but uh, it's an awesome thing. I love Mini GT. You guys know that. I've talked about it several times. I think bang for buck, they, at least in the U.S. and how I get them, bang for the buck, they are. there's a lot of value there, um, in my opinion. So you guys, you know, feel free to fight me in the comments, whatever. I really dig it. So this was a fun episode, I would say. We had the, uh, of course, getting this from uh, Dee's Customs was fantastic. Uh, the custom that he made is really cool too. And then, uh, of course, we got some green light this time and everything uh, on the uh, driver's side of the car looks good on all of these models. So I guess 50% cool. I could even almost say 75% cool because we, you know, it's usually one of the wheels. So 25% of the wheels are bad. Uh, overall, the castings are nice though. So just get your quality control under control. You know what I mean? Could you do it? Could you? Maybe? Probably not. They weren't. They don't care. Uh, and I will say this, and I it, I rip on Greenlight uh, for their quality control, but it's deserved. And the other thing that's deserved is their like social media is just kind of disgusting, um, in my opinion. You know, maybe they'll change. Maybe they'll make something else. Be, but they're they just could not. They don't take criticism well, and uh, they tend to start to rip on other brands and stuff. I've seen him do it on social media, and that's kind of, it's just not cool, man. It just really isn't. It's like, you don't ever see, like, Mini GT ripping on another brand. It's weird. So, that's childish. I, I, I don't know. 
there's there's room in the hobby for all of you guys. Just get along, would you? Greenlight does its own thing. They do a fantastic thing. They do some weird stuff that nobody else does. And the same thing with like mini GTs, same thing with Par 64, same thing with Tarmac Works, same thing with Inno 64. Inno and Tarmac are somewhat similar, but they still do different stuff from each other. And then, you know, you got Tomica Limited Vintage, you got Auto World, you got Johnny Lightning, you got Hot Wheels, you got Matchbox, and everybody has their own little flavor for 164 scale. And the problem for me is I like all of it. Okay, uh, at least some of all of it. Even even my old pals M2 machines, which I probably have the least amount of stuff in my collection from that particular brand, but there's still a place for it in the world here of 164 scale collecting. There's a lot of choices out there. There's no reason really to infight, I guess. So, and I've just seen Greenlight make some pretty, I don't know, inappropriate, not really inappropriate, whatever, not cool comments like just not classy comments i guess on social media towards people and i've tried to contact greenlight before too about possibly sending me cars or whatever to preview and stuff like that and any other time i've sent any other diecast brand any sort of email asking about that i've always gotten turned down but uh uh never gotten turned down more rudely than uh when i asked greenlight so Eh, a little bad taste in my mouth from that, I guess. I get it. I'm not a big channel, you guys. I'm not going to get a ton of stuff for free. Like, I'm not Lanley, and that's fine. I mean, that's he deserves what he got, what he gets. And, it's, uh, you know, he works very hard on, on his brand and what he, what he does. So I'm not saying that I deserve it. I'm just saying uh, what I'm saying is, uh, yeah, it'd be nice. Uh, but it, it at least be nice back when someone requests something, I think, would be good, you know. Even them just responding, saying, hey, I don't think it's going to work for our brand, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And it's not why I rip on them. This is why I rip on them. Right there. All right, I'm done griping. I apologize. All right, thank you very much, you guys. Uh, your support is absolutely awesome and amazing, and I do appreciate it. You guys are the reason why I keep doing these videos. Um, and so hopefully, you know, my my little but devoted following uh, continues to watch. And I do definitely appreciate it. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, like button, all that stuff. I think it helps me. It supposedly does. So, yeah, you know, that, that's, all, that's all good. All right, <laughs> I'm done. I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good one.